What's up, Barnhill family, and welcome back to your home for all things combat sports. Yo, yo. So bad news in the world of MMA. Charles Oliveira suffered a pretty nasty cut over his eye. He's officially out of UFC 294. However, the good news is that Volkanovski's stepping in, and he's going to have his second crack at the champion Islam Makashev. I'm going to be totally honest, and this is no slight to Oliveira because I'm a big fan, but I'm more excited about Volkanovski Islam 2 than I was for Charles Islam 2. Yeah, me too. And Islam Makhachev had a couple of rematches that were on the table for him. And for some reason, the Charles Oliveira fight just seemed to make more sense timing-wise and, and scheduling uh, for all the fighters involved. But everybody in their hearts knew that the real competitive rematch that we all wanted to see was going to be Volkanovski versus Makhachev. And even even though Charles Oliveira is one of the best fighters that is on the UFC's roster and is for sure the number one contender at 55, it just wasn't nearly as competitive as the Volkanovski fight. He got finished in there. He didn't really win rounds. Whereas you look at the other end of the spectrum where Volkanovski's in there winning rounds. It seemed to me like whenever they announced the winner of that fight, that Volkanovski got robbed a little bit. Now, I went back and watched the fight. I think it was a much closer fight and could have gone either way. And, and ultimately, Islam got his hand raised. And I think that retaining his belt was the right decision. But man, Volkanovski came in there to fight. He put up a way better fight in the first go than Charles Oliveira did. And I know that this is kind of an interesting way to go about getting your rematch, you know, 10 days notice and you're going up a weight class and you didn't really expect to be on this card. You had just fought recently in a different weight class, but I think that actually can lend in Volkanovski's favor. He hasn't been thinking about Islam Makhachev for the past 10, 12 weeks in a grueling camp where he's training, you know, takedown defense and all the stuff that you have to do to prepare for a guy like Islam every single day. And he's focusing on, you know, getting his right meals and all that stuff. He's had no pressure on him. He's probably been training every single day just as he does when he's in a fight camp. He's just probably tailored back a little bit and not quite as stern with his dieting and all of that sort of stuff. But this, to me, feels like it could be one of those crazy moments where he's got nothing to lose. He doesn't have pressure on him. There's a big bag of money waiting for him right after he gets out of the octagon. And uh, Volkanovski's done some pretty crazy things in this world and in this sport. But if he can go get his hand raised on 10 days notice against the pound-for-pound -pound number one fighter in the world, in my opinion, in Islam, man, we're talking about the GOAT. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is really cool. This is very indicative of who Volkanovski is as a fighter. You know, very few people would take a short notice fight in the UFC. Every fighter, there's 700 plus of them on the roster, is a dangerous fight if somebody has to go in there unprepared on short notice. Right. Islam Makhachev, as you said, is arguably the best fighter of those 700 on that roster. Right. So to say, yeah, I'll get in on 10 days notice and go after him, that really says something about who Volkanovski is. When you talk about BMF, and he does want to fight for that belt at some point in time, this certainly puts him on the list if he were to ever decide to contend for that belt. 100%. But the truth of the matter is, as you said, Volkanovski has nothing to lose here. And sometimes we've seen fighters really, really perform when they don't have that weight on their shoulders. They mm -hmm. haven't just been through that grueling camp. They don't have people doubting them. They have, you know, Volkanovski, even though this fight's taking place in Abu Dhabi and it's going to be a very pro Makashev crowd there, everybody in that arena is going to stand up and cheer and respect Alexander Volkanovski for doing what he's doing to save the card. Right. So this is a feel good moment. As you also mentioned, there's a lot of money at the end of this for him. So he can get in there and have some fun and perform win, lose, or draw. He's got Ilya Taporia in January if he wants to continue mm -hmm. on with that fight. Or who knows, maybe he wins and then there's a trilogy with Makashev. I want to get into the X's and O's of the fight because I do think it can be a little bit different this time. I think both Islam and Alexander are better fighters for having fought each other. For sure. So I think you're going to see an even better version of these two the second time around than you did the first time. I think each one of them knows what the other needs to do to be successful against them because each one of them had their moments, had their rounds, and had their areas where they had success. And I think for Islam, he didn't think that Volkanovski would have his success in the grappling exchanges with some of those reversals and even finishing the fight on top, raining shots down on Islam. And conversely, 
I'm not sure that Volkanovsky thought that Islam would do as well on the feet with him as he did. So both guys have a lot to think about. But the, the good thing is that neither one of them have been thinking about each other. And now they get to go in there and have some more fun. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, you know, Volkanovsky had a great game plan going in there against Islam the first time. And luckily for him, Islam and, and the rest of the guys at Team Khabib aren't really known for switching up their game plans or switching up their styles. They go in there and they do the same thing round after round, fight after fight, and they always get their hand raised. So why would they, you know, fix something that isn't broken? They keep getting their hand raised so they don't need to change their game plan all that much. And it's just one of those things where even if you know what's coming, you can't stop it. And while I don't want to say that Volkanovsky figured out how to crack the code on not getting taken down or not getting defeated by a guy like Islam Makashev or anybody else that comes out of that camp, he certainly opened the eyes to the entire world on how to defend yourself as best as possible against their attacks. Even Islam Makashev was surprised at how well Volkanovsky was defending all the grappling exchanges and all the takedown attempts. He's even hitting reversals on him. And Volkanovsky, though he's the shorter guy and doesn't have, you know, the long reach and he seems like he might be even a little bit small at his original weight class of 145, he packs a lot of power in his punches and he's very interesting and, and, and agile on his feet. And when he starts to put together his combinations and his, his do his footwork, it can be very tricky for you to try to navigate and figure out. Islam Makashev did all the right things to get his hand raised in that last fight, but he's going to have to be on his toes again because this is going to be one of those types of fights where Volkanovski's got nothing to lose. If he goes out there and doesn't get his hand raised, he wasn't supposed to in the first place. But if he goes out there and shocks the world, we're talking about one of the biggest moments in UFC history. He's going to uh, Abu Dhabi to fight Islam Makashev 10 days notice. He's getting his rematch that he wants, but all the pressure is off of him. And I think all the credit that we're giving Volkanovski also has to be given to Islam Makashev. 100%. Yeah, we're not talking about Islam Makashev not having to take a fight on 10 days notice. He was probably preparing for Charles Oliveira. And like we said earlier, they have the same game plan. They usually go into all fights with a similar style and game plan. But when you're dealing with a body like Charles Oliveira that's very different than the body of Volkanovski, you do start to look for things and you start to, you know, invite sparring partners into your camp that look and feel more like the guy you're going to fight. Now, 10 days later, or 10 days before the fight, rather, Volkanovski steps in. You're about to fight the guy who gave you the hardest fight of your entire career so far, and you didn't know about it up until less than two weeks. Yeah, for sure. Islam deserves some credit here, too, for taking this fight because Charles Oliveira is diametrically opposed as far as style is concerned and body type to Alexander Volkanovsky. You for know, sure. Islam was preparing for a guy that comes straight forward at you, mm -hmm. that plays jujitsu from the bottom and is his same height. Right. Now he's got all three of the opposites of those. He's got a guy who's four or five inches shorter that moves around the cage and cuts angles and doesn't just come right at you and give you the momentum you need to, to change levels and do your takedowns and absolutely under no circumstances conceding the bottom position on the ground. Volkanovsky right. was scrambling, getting to his feet. And while yes, Volkanovsky, as you said, is small for 155 and maybe even average or on, on the smaller side for 145, he is super strong. Mm -hmm. That guy used to be 200 pounds and he was a rugby player those guys are tough and strong as hell and Volkanovsky even though he shaved off a lot of that body mass he didn't lose a lot of strength so while he's right. a compact little fella he's extremely strong and I want to just get right into the predictions of this fight personally I'm going to go Makashev again I think that he's been dialed in for another 12 weeks he's been working with Habib again he's been working with uh, Javier Mendez all of the stuff that he needed to do to prepare for Charles Oliveira is going to help him in this fight. And Volk, you know, obviously if there ever was a professional in the industry, it was Alexander Volkanovsky. So he's not like Patty the Batty in the mm -hmm. sense that he's taken four months off and he hasn't seen the inside of a gym. I'm sure he's still training five, six days a week. He's just not ramping up the sparring as much. He's not ramping up the diet as much. And maybe the strength and conditioning has taken a slight step back. But Volkanovsky, make no mistake, will be fully prepared for this fight and he will be fully prepared to go five rounds. I just think that Islam is just in that mode. He's dialed in the fights in Abu Dhabi. I think he figured out some things that he can use to try to counter the reversals that Volkanovsky was doing in the first fight to where Volk won't have as much grappling success and Islam will be able to find his opportunities to get to top position and do some damage on the ground. Man, it's so hard to say that I think that either one of these guys can be finished. I'm just going to say 
the same thing happens again. It's a tough, controversial decision, but Makashev gets his hand raised. Man, can you imagine if that happens? We could be seeing Volkanovski enter another one of those situations where he's getting into a trilogy, but instead of being in the position he's in, he's in the position Max Holloway's in. Because if he goes out there and fights just like he did in the last time, and we have a controversial split decision or something like that, we could see him be 0-2 against Makashev, and then somehow down the road a couple of years from now, get a third match yep. against him. It would just be so crazy like that and you know I'll, I'll give you my prediction but before I do I have to say this it feels like a crazy night for me and I always like to look at the sport from my my future eyes right it's it's kind of weird to say but like I feel like historical moments in the UFC take place and then when you're looking back on them from years ahead you're like of course that happened so I am sort of leaning towards the fact that we see these guys fight and it goes split, split, and now we've got one and one, and we're going to have to see them fight in the real trilogy. The next fight for both of these guys is against each other once again. And that, of course, means that Alexander Volkanovsky has to get his hand raised. And one thing I'll say about Islam Makashev and the rest of the guys that he trains with, especially Khabib, is they're almost like mythical creatures in a sense that, like, you, until you've gotten in a cage with them, you don't really know what it's like to wrestle against them. You don't really know what that pressure feels like. But then, you know, you hear some of the fighters that did get to go in there and get locked in a cage with them. They talk about it afterwards. And it's almost like this camaraderie against uh, uh, amongst the guys. Drew Dober comes to mind. Drew Dober, right. yeah. Justin Gaethje, you know, these types of guys, they've been in there, they felt it. And then they can go like feel comforted talking to each other. Like, yeah, it really was that bad. It really was that crazy. And Volkanovski has the advantage of he's been there before. He didn't get his hand raised, but he won a lot of exchanges. He won a lot of minutes of that first fight against him. And I even had him winning two of the five rounds. So I think the fact that he's felt it, I think the fact that he knows what to expect and the fact that the game plan's not really going to change much from the first time, plus the lack of pressure that's been put on Volkanovski, all he's got to do is show up, make some weight, and then go make history. I see this fight going the distance again. Like you said, these guys aren't going to finish one another. I could see both guys touching the canvas once or twice from the striking because they actually pack a lot of power in their punches and they're, they're pretty dynamic with their striking. I see this going all 25 minutes. And I think just for, for history purposes, the, the MMA gods think these guys match up so well that we, they want to show it to us three times. I think Volkanovski gets his hand raised in a split decision, controversial, and we got to see a trilogy. I cannot wait to see. Me either.